OK, so let's have a look at the inverse of cos x. Or, uh, in other words, arc cos. So we're going to use a similar trick of restricting the domain for cosine here. There we are. OK, so there's pi, there's 2 pi, there's minus pi, or minus 2 pi, going between minus 1 and 1. There's pi over 2. OK, so what we can do then is, once again, we're trying to find a piece that is 1 to 1, OK, that covers all of the possible y values. So you could go from minus pi to 0, for example, because that goes from minus 1 up to 1. That's perfectly fine. We traditionally go from 0 to pi, however. So we cut the curve so that only the part from 0 to pi exists. OK. And then that allows us to find uh, what the inverse function actually looks like by reflecting all of the points in the line y equals x. So this point here, which is at 0, 1, becomes 1, 0. This point here, which is at pi over 2, uh, 0, goes to 0, pi over 2. And then this point here, which is at pi minus 1, becomes minus 1 pi. OK, so then it's just a case of making sure you get the shape of the curve right. So then it's going to go this way around. OK, and there is the shape of arc cos x. OK, that's what it looks like. That's what it looks like, and that's how we can build it from the restricted domain version of cosine of x.